Hello and welcome to Car and Bike. Now, electric scooters are all the rage these days, but the petrol powered scooters are still here. Absolutely. And there's no replacing them anytime soon, even though some manufacturers have been saying or talking about ending ice age, but the ice scooters are still going stronger than the kick. Sure, 100%. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the last few years, we have seen that. Uh, while the push on uh, petrol scooters may have uh, receded, may have, uh, you know, <clears throat> not been as strong as it was earlier. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there are still uh, some really good petrol scooters that you can buy for yourself. Whether you want a sporty flavor, whether you want a scooter for your family. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there are quite a few options. And uh, today, the topic of our discussion is like the best petrol scooters you can buy. Like uh, we'll try and keep it to like one or two uh, picks from each segment uh, in the scooter market. So Pritam, why don't you start off? And of course, for again for simplification and for to make it simple, uh, we'll pick uh, the best scooters which are available in the market under two hundred cc. Let's say, is sure. that yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, under two hundred cc. Because that's the kind of. Uh, <clears throat> segments that the scooter buyer usually is looking for you know from 110 cc to 125 cc those are the main you know where the whole action is and of course but there are some 150 160 cc scooters that are very good and people who want slightly premium but don't want to pay a lot a bomb right uh, for scooters so of course to start off with we'll have to pick the largest selling scooter that's been sitting pretty right at the top and that's the honda activa 110 right Absolutely. I mean, uh, after the Hero Splendor, the Activa 110 has been the highest selling uh, two-wheeler model in India for the longest time. And in fact, I think uh, between, uh, you know, a few years ago, the Activa even managed to dethrone the Splendor from the perch. So that's really commendable. And uh, over the years, since 2001, since the Activa has been on sale, it has undergone various modifications, you know, various updates. Uh, right now, it is in its sixth generation. Sixth generation. Sixth G. In fact, if you look at uh, the 90s, uh, the scooter sales had really gone down then. Nobody was buying scooters when the 100cc motorcycles right. were coming in, especially the four-stroke motorcycles, which, which offered a lot of, uh, you know, fuel economy, like right. claiming 80, 90 kilometers per liter. Right. So scooter sales had sort of dipped very sharply. But 2001, the whole scooter segment was completely transformed. And that laurel solely rests on the Honda Activa when it was launched. It Absolutely. really kickstarted a new trend of interest in scooters again, automatic scooters with a CVT transmission, which right. are easy to use, easy to ride. The whole family can uh, ride it, you know. Absolutely. And, and uh, Honda has stayed uh, true to form, keeping the Activa very, very easy and simple. Uh, no fancy gimmicks and, uh, you know, no high-end technology. It is the scooter for the masses. So everybody from a young college-going student to somebody who is in his 60s or 70s, everybody can ride the Activa. It's that kind of a scooter. Yeah, so prices start from around 76000 rupees right. and uh, so activa still going strong uh, still a lot of people like it the activa 110 of course uh, the activa 125 is also on sale that's also a good scooter right. and many people want slightly more performance you know maybe use it too up more often so the activa 125 is also there but if you want something else beyond the activa 110 there's also a 110 cc scooter from tvs the tvs jupiter right. which is also a very good product, very well rounded product, rides well, practical, it's got an external fuel filler cap, one of the first scooters to come with the external Absolutely, fuel filler yeah. cap. And so tell us about the Jupiter, what's been your experience with the Jupiter like? So I've ridden the Jupiter for quite a bit, in fact, uh, it used to be my long term in a previous organization, so I've had it for like an extended period of time. And I have only good memories about the scooter, it is like very, very comfortable, the ride quality is really plush. Because uh, unlike uh, scooters of that time, it had a proper telescopic, telescopic fork. Yeah. So one of the first scooters, in fact, to get uh, a telescopic fork up front. And apart from that, uh, it was decently fuel efficient. And the one big uh, USP was that the external fuel uh, filler cap, it uh, made it easier to fill in petrol. You still had to get off your seat. That's a different thing. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, uh, sure, somebody would say that it's not, you know, very peppy or very jazzy or very funky looking. It's a family scooter 
and it has been like that for the longest time. Yeah, so if you are looking for an alternative to the Honda Activa 110, the TVS Jupiter is a practical, well-rounded product which will meet all your requirements if you're looking for something like a 110, 109cc scooter. But if you find that both the Activa and the Jupiter are too common, you see too, of, too many of them on the streets, you want something new, something slightly more trendy, we have a new Hero Zoom 110. That's quite a funky scooter and quite nice to ride actually. Oh yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, for a 110cc scooter, I think it's the sportiest 110cc scooter in the market right now. There's no doubt about that. It handles really well. It has decent enough, you know, uh, pep and spring in its step. And uh, the one thing that I really like about the scooter, it's a gimmick, of course. It has uh, these industry-first cornering lights. So if you would lean to the left or to the right while uh, taking a turn, there's an LED which lights up. It looks even better in the dark. But uh, apart from that, it's a simple scooter, no fancy technology apart from that one feature. And uh, handles really well. You can actually go on, you know, attack corners uh, really, uh, you know, vigorously, enthusiastically. The only one issue with the scooter is that uh, the engine doesn't feel as refined. It has some vibrations right in the middle of the power band. Say when you ride the scooter between uh, 45 to 60 kmph. Mm -hmm. So that's when you uh, feel those vibrations. But uh, if you discount that, then it's actually a very Yeah, nice overall scooter. it's a great product. And if you want something different from the Honda Activa or the TVS Jupiter, the Hero Zoom is a no-brainer. You should take a test ride of it. And Kingshu talked about the handling. How does handling matter to you? Because these are not something which you'd want to put your knee down on. But a good handling, dynamically sorted scooter makes you feel that much more in control. So if you need to do something like an emergency maneuver, a better handling scooter, better handling uh, two-wheeler for that matter, will make it make you feel much more in control. So moving up from the 110cc segment, if you want something with slightly more punch but still want a practical everyday scooter, you have the 125s, right Kingshuk? Right, absolutely. There are quite a few of them, 125s. We've already mentioned the Honda Activa 125. If you want to stay in the Honda Activa family, of course, there's a 125cc version. And Honda Dio, of course, is also there. Right. And, but if you want fuel economy with a slightly bigger 125cc engine, a practical, well-rounded, comfortable, dynamically sorted scooter, uh, my pick of the lot would be, as a practical, economical scooter, would be the Suzuki Access 125. Right. In fact, uh, the Access 125, it is uh, perhaps the highest selling 125cc scooter in India. So it's been around for a while and it's a very simple, basic scooter meant for a family, but has that extra zip, extra punch in it. Best selling 125cc for good reason. It's a fantastic product. Right. If you discount the rather plain Jane looks, it's been around for a while, of course, it looks a little dated. And if you don't want a very flashy, very trendy scooter, you want a safe and you don't, uh, not very adventurous with the design and all, the Suzuki XS125 still makes for a very good practical value for money scooter. And it's got a bigger 125cc engine, comfortable seat, two up comfort is pretty good. Absolutely. And great fuel economy. So all bases covered in terms of practicality, really. Right. But if you want the best of the lot in the 125 cc, what would be your pick? Uh, it definitely has to be the TVS Centoc 125. Uh, really cool, funky looking scooter. And uh, apart from the looks, the thing that TVS brought uh, with the Centoc 125 was technology. It was perhaps the first scooter to get uh, Bluetooth connectivity. TVS is smart connect technology. So you could, you know, uh, connect your Bluetooth uh, phone to the scooter. Uh, see what calls are getting, what calls you're getting, what SMSs you're getting. And uh, that's a fantastic feature to have in a scooter. And uh, you could also send a, you know, message if you're riding that, you know, I'm riding right now, I'll call you back. That message uh, sending option was there as well on the Entoc 125. And uh, if we talk about the performance of the scooter, what a fantastic machine, like powerful, zippy, light, and you could just glide through the traffic on the end talk. Again, dynamically very sorted, uh, sporty scooter. Uh, we wouldn't recommend you slicing through traffic like many irresponsible riders do. But if you do need to do some emergency maneuvers like, you know, swerve or brake or something, that handling bit comes in really handy because the TVS Talk 125 will make you feel always in control of the situation unless you're doing something 
irresponsible or stupid. And overall performance wise, handling wise, dynamic wise, right. practicality wise and looks wise, it still looks uh, contemporary even though it's been a few years since it right. was launched. So when it was launched in the BS4 era when the, with a carburetor then it really uh, made a new benchmark in the whole scooter segment in that price. It was still expensive, 90, right. 97, 95, 97,000 then on, also, right? Or maybe less than. I think it was around 80 when it 80 was launched. 80 when it was launched. But mm. uh, if you want to buy the top spec model, the NTOC 125 XT right now, it will cost you about uh, 1 lakh 5,000 rupees uh, X showroom. So 125 CC, the NTOC, uh, if you want something sporty, something trendy, something performance oriented, something dynamically sorted, uh, not to say that the XS125 is not dynamically sorted, it's got good handling. But design is rather plain gen. If you want something flashy, something trendy, then the NTOC is the way to look at it. Another sporty looking yet practical consideration in the 125cc scooter segment is the Suzuki Avenus 125, which offers very good value for money with its combination of sharp looks, good performance and dynamics along with decent fuel economy. Moving Upwards of the 125cc segment, if you go slightly premium, slightly more performance oriented, you have uh, two scooters in that particular segment and price bracket, which are, of course, the Yamaha Aerox 155. You've right. ridden it, uh, so what has been your experience like with the Aerox? The Aerox, uh, so 155cc scooter, and I think it uses the same uh, engine as the R15. Yeah. So imagine the performance of an R15 or an MT15. Uh, plonked into a scooter format. It's really fun to ride. It looks really, really distinctive. I mean, it has great road presence on the road because the design is very quirky and, uh, you know, it feels all muscled up because it's very uh, uh, visually appealing, the uh, Aerox 155. And uh, in terms of dynamics, in terms of performance, yeah, it matches up to the best of the 150cc scooters. Yeah, but if you're looking for practical, the Aerox unfortunately loses out on that because it doesn't have a floorboard to sure. put stuff on. And uh, ride quality is slightly stiff. The suspension is slightly on the stiffer right. side. So if you have a bad patch of road to cover on your everyday commute, the Aerox probably will not appeal to you that much because uh, it's not very comfortable in terms of ride quality. But if we want a sporty performance oriented scooter, the Aerox 155 again, uh, automatic scooter of course, it's based on the R15 platform, the same engine more or less. Right. So in terms of performance, it really is a different league altogether. But it has its drawbacks, practicality and right. ride quality. So, and two up, the Aerox feels a little cramped. So yeah. maybe if you want your entire family and maybe you'll use you want a scooter to be used primarily for two up use, then the Aerox 155 may not be a very practical option. So, what else in that segment apart from the Aerox uh, 155? The Aprilia SXR 160. Right. It's a really nice scooter, looks really good, and uh, maybe slightly more practical than the Aerox 155. Correct. Not as powerful, <coughs> not as dynamically sorted as the Aerox, because that, that's a different thing altogether. But the Aprilia SXR 160, again, a fantastic scooter that you can ride daily. Uh, maybe if you have a long commute, it works well, it is comfortable. The seat is plush and uh, yes, it looks good as well. The only problem with the Aprilia SXR 165 could be the fact that there are not many service centers and dealerships of Aprilia at present, even in metro cities. So that could be one concern, but uh, apart from that, I think it's a good option to have in the yeah. 125cc and above segment. It looks of big, it's got presence, yes, right? It's yeah. substantial. Yeah. So from far off, you can make out the, that's a nice big scooter that's coming your way. So if you talk about uh, being a substantial and a big looking scooter, we missed out on one scooter in the 125cc segment, which is Suzuki Bergman Street. It's a maxi style scooter, not really right. a maxi scooter as such, yeah. based on the Suzuki Access uh, 125 platform. So something which has been largely very successful for Suzuki. It's uh, been the highest selling 125cc scooter for many years now. Right. Um, the maxi style Bergman Street is also another option if you kind of, if you kind of like that kind of looks but uh, in terms of proportions I find it uh, not very gelling with the wheel size and the body size so right but that's again a subjective thing but to me the wheels look smaller than the body and the style of the scooter that's but true. it's a good scooter nevertheless 
and uh, other than that uh, maxi style scooter of course uh, yamaha did showcase uh, the yamaha and max maxi scooter again based on the same platform as the aerox 155 in fact i had used one extensively on one of my uh, vacations in thailand a right, few years ago right. the n max is a brilliant scooter it looks big lots of storage space two up comfort is nothing else can compare two up comfort about all the scooters that we mentioned here, right? As far as the N Max is concerned, and it was showcased at the Bharat Mobility Expo recently in Delhi. So, if Yamaha India does introduce that at a competitive price, the N Max could be something which could really change the game for India Yamaha going forward. Absolutely. And just to add to what uh, Pritham said already, uh, in case you're wondering, both the Aprilia SXR 160 and the Yamaha Aerox 155. Both of them have an ex showroom price of little less than 1.5 lakh rupees. So, yes, that's the price that you have to pay for performance. That's how it is. And you have to compromise on practicality a bit. But uh, for that extra money, you get that extra performance, extra zing. And of course, a very substantial scooter on the road. So, those are the scooters, the best scooters that you can buy, petrol powered scooters that you can think of, uh, which are available in the market. Of course, Aprilia SSR 125 is also there, right? Yes, you have the Aprilia SR 160 range, you have the Vespa range. So, you do have options, but uh, these are the best picks that we managed. Oh, yes. And, and, Pritam, this is going to be fun. In case you have really deep pockets, in case you really like scooters, the scooter format, then you also have the BMW C400 GT. Yes, it's a BMW scooter. It's on sale in India. It has a 350cc engine. I have one question. For the price of a BMW C400 GT, how many Activas can you buy? Oh, I don't know. I don't think you can say that on the camera. <laughs> so to answer Pritham's question, uh, the BMW C400 GT has a top speed of 139 kilometers per hour. But here's the clincher. It is priced at 11 lakh 25 thousand rupees ex showroom. So 11 lakh 25 thousand, I think uh, so many uh, performance bikes you can buy. You can get a Triumph, you can get so a So what King Shook is Ducati <laughs> essentially trying to say is that all the scooters that we've discussed here today, yeah. you can buy all of them for the price of once BMW C400 GT. And then there'll be still some change left to buy maybe another couple of Activas. There you go, you said it. <laughs> 11 lakh 25,000 rupees X showroom BMW C400 GT. Sorry, and uh, yes, if you're mad enough, why not? I mean, you only live once, so if you have that kind of money, for sure, go for it. So, Activa, Jupiter, Hero Zoom, TVS and Talk, Yamaha Aerox, Aprilia SXR 160. What is what are your favorite scooters? Do let us know in the comments. And if there's only one scooter that you'd pick from this whole list that we discussed, which one will it be and why? Do let us know in the comments. And thank you for watching.